So continuing on the theme of introducing tectonics as a discipline, this mini lecture focuses on the tool of structural geology and structural analysis and how it's used to better understand tectonic processes. So one of the main contributions of structural geology is to document the geometries and kinematics of structures over multiple small areas and then add them up to give a regional picture of crustal deformation patterns. So structural geologists spend a lot of time compiling maps and kinematic data for multiple regions. Uh, we then examine those at the regional scale to help identify uh, regions of similar kinematic orientation and try to interpret them in terms of individual uh, tectonic domains. And then ultimately, we want to try and link the strain patterns to the responsible stress field, which helps us get at uh, tectonic driving forces. Structural geologists also place a lot of emphasis on identifying different deformational events and assigning specific structures to each event. Uh, we work often with cross-cutting relationships, like in the cartoon on the left, trying to establish when folding occurred relative to, say, magmatic intrusion, relative to sedimentary depositional events and development of unconformities, uh, relative to faulting, etc. We tend to use numbering or lettering systems to distinguish these different uh, generations. So the image on the right, for example, shows folded bedding labeled with uh, the blue line as S0. The folds represent a deformation event that occurred after deposition, uh, labeled in red as F1. And additionally, those F1 folds are associated with a new planar deformation fabric known as an axial plane cleavage, labeled here uh, with the green line as S1. And altogether, we would collect this, these structures into a deformational event that we might label D1, and we can try to track down the tectonic forces that produced this suite of uh, structures if they're observed at a regional scale. Another key aspect of structural geology is aimed at understanding strain localization. We want to use observations of rocks to understand which ones were strong, so resisted strain, and which ones were weak and therefore concentrated, concentrated strain over much longer timescales. We also want to use the, the rocks to understand whether their mechanical behaviors changed with progressive deformation perhaps due to changes in pressure temperature conditions or changes in the state of the deforming materials such as grain size, mineralogy, uh, or mineral crystallographic or shape uh, preferred orientations, for example. We also separate rocks by their deformation modes, which is important too to understanding regional tectonic regimes and, and tectonic styles. When I use the term deformation mode, I'm thinking in terms of uh, ductile, meaning flowing and crystal plastic, as in the image of the dolomite and calcite marble on the bottom right. And that's compared to uh, brittle, which refers to discontinuous deformation, uh, faulted by discrete structures or broken up, as in the cataclastic uh, fault rock in the upper right. Finally, structural geology is also fairly quantitative in that we're always seeking to use the rock record to describe relationships between stress and strain, known as constitutive laws, and more generally, just to come up with mathematical descriptions of different deformation types and at different spatial uh, scales. So for example, we've developed mostly empirically based relationships that describe brittle or frictional deformation as in the example in the upper right, known as Coulomb friction, which we'll return to in a later lecture, but that relates the shear stress on the fault plane to the internal cohesion of a material, its friction coefficient, and the effective normal stress that's placed on that, on that structure. The equation on the lower right then describes ductile or viscous deformation and relates the strain rate, which is a measure of how fast the rock deforms over a given thickness, to the stress, and to an Arrhenius term that expresses 
the temperature and pressure dependence of, of the creep law. So to summarize, the tool of structural geology applied to tectonics allows us to identify a collection of structures and their spatial distributions that define tectonic domains, provides us with a relative order of deformation events that may reflect changing tectonic conditions, and it provides us with both qualitative and quantitative information on the rheology or bulk mechanical behavior of material entrained by some tectonic process. So then you can imagine though, that we're left wanting to know the pressure temperature conditions of different deformation events, as well as their absolute rather than relative uh, timing and their, and their durations. And that's where the tools of metamorphic petrology and geochronology come into play as discussed in the next uh, video segments.